of Covering My name is Stephen Bernoulli. You're watching Israeli News Live, and it is an eventful evening this evening, but an eventful day, uh, to say the very least. I want to first take you, before we get into our major part of the news about uh, things going on with Russia, Turkey, and also the downing of the Su-24 Russian bomber. It's going to be a little shocking ride for you this evening, especially for those of you in the United States that may not be aware of some of the news coming out uh, just recently here. But before I do, Theresa May, uh, you're going to get to hear her say herself, the very thing we reported uh, uh, about a week or so ago there when we were in uh, London there at the uh, Trident protest where uh, also MP uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chapman, I believe it was, it was actually there. We interviewed him uh, speaking against uh adding more nuclear arms to their arsenal. Uh, but I want you to hear for yourself how Theresa May, without any hesitation, says she'll push the button. Uh, now, before I, before I play this, in all fairness to her, I must say that she does uh, go on further in the statement, making it clear that what good does it do to have nuclear weapons unless you know you're willing to use them as a deterrent? But the question is posed to her, would she be willing to press the button knowing that 100,000 innocent men, women, and children would be killed? Watch her response. Watch the question and the response. Let, let me congratulate the Prime Minister on your new rule. But can we cut to the chase? Is she personally prepared to authorize a nuclear strike that could kill a hundred thousand innocent men, women, and children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And and I have to say to the honourable gentleman, the whole point of a deterrent is that our enemies need to know that we would be prepared to use it. Unlike some suggestions that we Jeez. Guys, I you know, I realize that if you are having a nuclear deterrent, yes. I suppose the fact that you would be willing to use it in the event to avert a major war or the killing of your own people, I suppose the answer would have to be yes, but to just so quickly uh, jump up there and say yes when the question is posed of innocent men, women, and children. I would have had to take a step back for a moment with that type of question posed and say did we not learn anything from uh, Hiroshima? Did we not learn anything from the two nuclear bombs that were dropped on Japan? Now, granted, we can say, well, Japan did attack Pearl Harbor unprovoked. But then again, Japan was at the point of surrender already and the bombs were dropped anyway. What was it? Just an experiment? My grandfather was there when Pearl Harbor was attacked. The machine gun bullets going through the top of his vehicle. I remember the stories very well. So I do see both sides of the situation. Nonetheless, it is a devastating way of war and it is nothing, nothing good can come from new, using nuclear weapons. And now the world is just flooded with nuclear bombs everywhere. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because you could see what was going on, on there. Now, of course, those of you that maybe woke up this morning, we threw a small, quick broadcast out what was going on in Turkey there. The encirclic air base, the U.S. air base in Turkey was encircled uh, with thousands of protesters. In fact, even the uh, some reports were saying, uh, coming out saying that the uh, Turkish military had actually uh, not just to stop the protesters, but were concerned that another mili military coup may begin again. So it was really getting out, out of its way. This was on TASS News. About 7,000 military surrounded and blocked in circlet air base and blocked entrances and exits amid rumors of another coup attempt Turkish Hariyat reported on Sunday. The newspaper writes, the operation looked much like the actions of the military during the recent coup attempt in Turkey on July 15th. The police said the operation lasted for two and a half hours. The country's minister for EU affairs, Omar Silik, tweeted, tweeted and blocking was for security reasons, only adding there is no problem uh, there. So yes, the base was surrounded by 
Turkish military police, uh, and I guess they're ready to get into a battle with the United States. Of course, it is coming out everywhere that the U.S. was involved in the actual uh, coup uh, attempt. A lot, of, uh, a lot of evidence against the United States on this. Uh, you got to go back and look at Ukraine as well. The U.S., definitely there's a smoking gun on that one there. Uh, and I can easily play you some of the audio portions about what actually went on with Ukraine and just how involved the U.S. was in toppling that government. Anyway, and it seems to be, according to some Russian sources, as that is that uh, the United States wanted to cause this problem with Turkey uh, when they couldn't get uh, Turkey's relationship to break completely away after the downing of the Su-24 last year. Uh, and blaming it on Erdogan that it actually happened when now there's new evidence out suggesting the United States was behind that in order to break the relationships between Russia and Turkey. Now, I say this, guys, and believe me, as much as Erdogan is out there trying to make himself a, uh, a, a, a dictator of the country, I do not support Erdogan, not even in a moment of an eye of on this. He is jailing journalists totally unprovoked without cause, everything else. And now with the coup uh, attempt that failed, he's even more on a rampage. So it's not a good thing at all. And yet at the same time, we are watching as uh, Vladimir Putin has been building relationships with countries all over. He also is going after NATO member states to try to get them in his camp as he realizes no doubt the inevitable is coming and that's going to be a war with the United States. Some are even suggesting this is one of the main reasons for Britain leaving the EU. It is so they can go with the United States to war with Russia and not have to worry about being part of the EU member states and getting everyone to agree before doing an attack. As you saw, uh, the Prime Minister May is willing to push a button, no questions asked. That's exactly the kind of woman that Obama needs on his side when it comes to any kind of preemptive strike they might want to do on Russia. And of course, Russia's doing the same, speaking about a preemptive strike. Now, Willie Weimer, let me give you a little idea of who Willie Weimer is here so that you can kind of get an idea, because I'm fixing to talk about Willie here in just a moment. I want you to be able to see who he is. He's a German politician. He is actually, uh, let me pull it up to where he's at. This is Willie Weimer right here, and we're going to be talking about him in just a moment. A German politician. He's got a lot of credentials behind him. He's speaking here uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, at an event, not sure what the event is about, I actually sent it to a brother, a friend of mine there uh, who speaks German to get a translation on that, but according to Sputnik News, and it's not just Sputnik News, guys, I have followed this on two other Russian language sources, have three Russian language sources already that, that back this story to be authentic, but Sputnik News, which is a good Russian source, says U.S. and Saudi Arabia involved in Turkey's downing of the Russian Su-24 in Syria. A strong accusation. Willie Weimer, I, uh, I highlighted his name there. He's a German, German former CDU politician, vice president of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Willie Weimer told Sputnik Dutchland that he fears NATO's, NATO involvement in the downing of the Russian Su-24 bomber over Syria last November. NATO was involved in last year's downing of Russia's Su-24 bomber in Syria airspace. Willie Weimer, former vice president of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE, told Sputnik Deutschland on Friday. Uh, he says here, on November 24th, 2015, Turkish jets downed a Russian Su-24 bomber carrying out anti-terror operations in Syria. The plane's two co-pilots parachuted from the plane, but one of them, Lieutenant Colonel Oleg Pushkov, was shot and killed by suspected Turkmen militants operating in Syria. The incident caused a major diplomatic dispute between Turkey and Russia. The former uh, said uh, said the bomber was shot for infringing Turkish airspace, but Russia maintains the Su-24 
did not enter Turkish airspace and was carrying out an anti-Daesh mission in Syria when it was down. The downing had been inter interpreted as a unilateral decision by Turkey, but Willie Weimer contends that in fact NATO and Saudi forces were involved in the incident. According to my information, Airborne Early Warning and Control System, the AWACS aircraft from the U.S. and Saudi Arabia were involved, Weimer said. Aircraft like that Russian Su-24 bomber are not that easy just to shoot out of the sky. You need to take aim. You can only do that with AWACS aircraft. That's what Willie Weimer says. Only you can do it with an AWACS aircraft. Russian defense officials released the Su-24 flight data, which shows its position in Syrian airspace at the moment it was downed by Turkish F-16s. The two AWACS planes involved in the incident took off from a NATO base on Cyprus and an air base in Saudi Arabia, respectively, Weimer said. He explained that according to NATO guidelines, if a plane is believed to be violating another country's airspace, then contact should be made with the appropriate flight control center to draw the pilot's attention to the error. Now, the weird thing about all this, guys, is that he actually, he, they, he actually goes on to state, this is Mr. Weimer, that he believes that it was actually done by the United States in order to, uh, to, to bring down the close relationships that the United States had been making with Erdogan, that that was where the problem was at. That's what he believes actually happened and why they actually did this. They did it intentionally. Now, the question is, is was that true or not? We don't, we don't really know for sure, but nonetheless, it was awfully a strange situation. Putin, extremely angry over the issue, especially when Erdogan seemed to just uh, side with the pilot and, and almost didn't even care, seemingly. Now, of course, they're big buddies. And the other thing that's really kind of interesting, and that is that Russia... From some of the Russian news sources we've been looking at there actually is the one that tipped off Erdogan of a coup coming on uh, that was fixing to happen on his country and even help evacuate him before the special force unit could come in there and kill him there at the, res at the resort that he was staying at. This is one of the reasons why you see suddenly that Erdogan has got such a great relationship with Russia. Now, thus far, the Turkish officials are not admitting this, but it is in Russian news sources that, yes, indeed, Russia did rescue uh, him and warned him because their own secret uh, surveillance that they're doing in Syria right now, they were able to pick up the information from U.S. sources that the coup, uh, the coup was being planned and was about to take place, and they knew it at least 24 hours in advance. That's another kind of smoking gun that puts the blame back on the United States again that, yes, they were involved in this. It's getting kind of crazy, guys, but one thing that's really troubled me as well after hearing about this. Now, I am sure Vladimir Putin knew all along that the U.S. had to know, well, in fact, it's not just, I'm sure, I know he knew that the U.S. was involved in this because I remember now, just coming to my mind now, I remember him saying that they could not have done it alone. The U.S. would have had to have been, in, been helping in order to do it. So now that, as I go back and look at that, remembering that, uh, I am sure with Weimar coming out and stating what he has now, Putin is going to be out for vengeance. This could get very bad, guys. And it could get bad in a very, very short period of time. Don't think that Putin isn't working on his own strategies. He is. He was just in uh, Slovenia uh, marking the 100th anniversary of the Russian soldiers that were killed during World War I in Slovenia. And even though Slovenia in 2004 became a NATO member and also an EU member, uh, still they hold a very close alliance with Russia. And so he's been a very good diplomat working on building his partnership. 
and, and rightly so, because if he ends up going into a war with NATO, he wants to make sure he's got as many people on his side as he possibly can. He is truly a statesman. Reminds me a lot of George W. Bush when he was President of the United States and how he was able to galvanize support from all over the world. Now the advantage that Putin has right now is that a lot of the Arabic world is starting to back him as well. Now not all of them will because you have to remember uh, he's over there bombing in Syria right now as well. And there's been many people killed as a result. But he's got Syria in his back pocket, Iran in his back pocket, now Turkey in his back pocket with Turkey demanding that the United States leave its country. Guys, this is going to be a bad situation no matter which way you look. And I am very concerned for my own people, the people of Israel, uh, which there's all kinds of stuff going on over there, even... Uh, uh, Bennett, who is the in the uh, the Knesset there, he's been part of the Likud party for a long period of time, or actually not a Likud party, but joined up with Likud uh, to work with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now there's threats of him being fired by Prime Minister Netanyahu because he is so outspoken about everything that the Prime Minister has been doing. But it only goes to show there are some serious things happening everywhere we turn, guys. It's a late hour, and it's only it's an hour to get our lives in order and ready for the coming of Mashiach, the Messiah. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.